So on our last session, we created a button which shows the age after performing a small, simple form script. In this session, we're going to take that a little bit further and we're going to have the age presented on the screen every time you go into the record. Now, in order to do this, what we need is a, is a property that we can use to, to hold the age on our IDM. Now, we could add this to the SQL table. However, it's not something that we wish to store in SQL. It's something that we want generated each time. So, if I go to my IDO editor and if I go into the properties, I can see my current properties are ID, full name and date of birth. If I wish to create a new property, I can do that in here. Now, I could create a new property that was bound to the SQL column if I wish to create a new column. I can also create a property which is derived, which is effectively a case or a partial SQL statement on the selection. In this case, I'm going to create an unbound property which means that it's not actually bound to anything. I'm going to need to use logic to populate this property. And it's going to be called age. Now the property itself is going to be a short integer and just type int. Now once I've created that property, what I want to do is maybe put it somewhere in the sequence and assign a label string ID. So if we remember before, we use lowercase s followed by age and that should give us a, a label string called age. Again, we want to justify this to the right since it's numeric and it's going to be read only. It's not something we're going to be able to edit and stamp back onto the SQL table. OK, so that's the property created. Now, in order to clear our cache and make sure that that property is available on the IDO, we have to first make sure that we don't have any forms open which are using that IDO because that will prevent the cache being flushed. And then we need to make sure in our user preferences that we have this box checked which unloads IDO metadata with forms. Now that just makes sure the IDO which is cached in memory gets flushed uh, in order to pick up our new age property. So what we're going to do in the form definition is we have unload all global form objects, control U, and control U is normally the quickest way to access this. It happens very quickly and once we do this if we go back into our form we should be able to find our, our new property. So I look for my people form and if I go into design mode and the collections, I should find my new age property and I should be able to either create the components individually or drag it on from here. There we are. So that's adding the new age property to the form. It's warning me that I need to reload the form just to pick up that new bound value. But what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of editing just to make sure that everything's lining up and looking good. OK. And again, line everything up. So we've now got the age on screen. If I do a regenerate of the form, come out of design mode and do a refresh, I should see now that I've got the age on here, but the age itself is not editable. Uh, although the field is there, it's not editable. And the reason for that is because we defined it as read only. Now our age label itself, although we've defined it against the IDO, is not yet in the strings database. So if I go into the inheritance model and look at the attributes inherited from the age property, I can see that the age string does not exist. So if I create that now, click OK, done, save and regenerate my form, I should see that the age is now translated and it's in the strings database. So we now have our people with the age property. It's there on screen, but it's not currently populated. Our show age only pops up with an edit window. We could modify this so that when we press the button or have some kind of triggered offense, it would update the age, but that would only ever work on, on this form. And if we want to reuse the same logic elsewhere, what we want to do is create a global script. And this is a script that's reusable elsewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my event handler I'm going to create a new event handler. Now this time I've not got a button or any other action to trigger it from, so I'm going to take one of the standard events. Now one of the events that's quite useful to use in this case is standard object select current complete. Now this is fired once the new row is selected or refreshed or updated. We're always going to get this event fired, so it's quite a good one to tie things to. The type previously was a form script. This time we're going to do a global script call. So it's going to be called the run script, I believe. There we are. So this is going to run for me a global script. Parameters. Now, we only want this to fire on the primary collection 
or code people. It's important to note this because even though we've only got one collection on this form, there may be other forms where you have secondary collections or sub-collections and you don't necessarily want the event to fire every single time. We only want this one to fire when the person or is refreshed. Type specific parameters, what we have to do here is name a global script. We haven't defined that yet, so I'm just going to choose one for now and then we need to define our global script so I'll save our form as it is now and we can go straight from in here into the script function and we can have a look at all of the global scripts or we can do this from the menu so we need to create a new global script here we're going to call it code show age just prefixing this so I can isolate it from any other standard scripts and, and always identify my component parts and again I prefer the language Visual C Sharp as opposed to Visual Basic both work absolutely fine and what we have now is previously we were working with a form script now we're working with a global script it's a slightly different type works in a slightly different way however because it is tied to the user interface you still have access to this form object and you can do things with that so we're going to take our get age again and we're going to paste that back in because we still want to reuse that same method we're just going to use it in a slightly different way now global scripts return a return value in this case it's going to be zero because we're always going to say successful but you could return 8, 16, some other number to indicate a failure if you needed to and we're going to do the same thing as we did before we need to get our string date of birth but this time instead of taking it from a parameter on the screen what we're going to do is we're going to accept it as an input parameter to our global script so global scripts have a get parameter function and the first parameter begins with index 0 so that's just going to give us a date of birth string that we're going to pass into this global script again we need to convert it to a date time but this time we want things to be a little bit more robust so we're going to use the try pass method so if date time try pass output the date of birth so providing it's successful we can now take it and change it and stamp it back on the form again we used this form previously to obtain the object property. This time what we can do, primary IDO collection, is we can set the current object property. And there is a set current object property. However, whilst that sets the property, it doesn't set it as modified and it doesn't refresh the component on screen. So the one we prefer to use is set current object property plus modify refresh. And what we can do with that is we can assign a property. So we could say age is set to get age and then we do the same thing as before we use a reference time of now and the date of birth and that should assign the age however because this is a global script and we want to be able to reuse it in several other places what we're going to do is instead of hard coding age as the property we set we're going to accept the property name as a second parameter so we'll do get parameter index number one is the parameter is the second parameter and because this is a, a read-only parameter because we don't want to have our record flagged as modified every time we run this function we're also going to do uh, this form primary idea collection set current object modified to be false so that's going to take the modification indicator off the current record after we set the age which is going to just prevent anyone being asked to save when the record hasn't really saved so that should be all we need in our global script and I've got a couple of errors ah there we are string and just resolve those errors of course the set current object property doesn't like an integer it likes a string so I'll just convert that and we should be good to go so I've got my code show age and I can now go back to my event handler and plug that in. So this time now when we do the run script we're going to choose our new show age and if you remember it takes two parameters so the first one is going to be the property value for date of birth and the second one is going to be the property name and here is the literal we just put type it in as shown there so that will give us the date of birth value from the DOB property and age is a property that we wish to update so we'll click OK there so every time the current object is refreshed and is completed it's going to run a script which is going to take the date of birth and it's going to return the age property as being updated so we'll save that we'll run our form and we'll just try changing the record and we can now see that the age is being set on the screen 
for each record. And if I was to add a new record and give this a date of birth, save this record, we should see that the age is calculated immediately. So we've created an unbound property which doesn't exist in the database. However, we're able to present that on screen by using a global script to calculate the age based on the date of birth. So when we have dynamic values like age that don't necessarily need to be stored on the database because they're changeable based on some current attribute like uh, the current date, then we can always recalculate those and present them on screen. And those global scripts can be picked up and reused elsewhere. So if you were to create another form uh, which also had an age on, you've got your global script which you can then pick up, plug in and reuse on another form, another IDO in a completely different place. Okay, so that's global scripting. Thank you for watching.